So once you have finished with your refined painting, you might notice um, because you're using lower opacity brushes, like I got down to 18% opacity for my brush, that things just keep softening. And sometimes that softening can be a little extreme. So let's play with the image a little bit. Instead of just dodging and burning and continuing to work with it, we can do other things. We can just take like hunks of it, like create an edge under the chin here. And then what I can do is I can duplicate it, Command J, and set that to darken or multiply, right? Or even some of these techniques we've learned from other projects. So that's multiply, maybe even dissolve. It's at 50%, I can darken it to 100%, right? And then because it's on its own layer, I can cut away from that directly. And cut some little edges out of it. It's going to be subtle. But there's lots of ways we can work with our images, kind of after the fact. All right. So ultimately, if we just want to turn in the, the painting, this is what I would do. I'm going to turn off my reference image there. So it's kind of distracting. You don't get to see the thing as a whole. You want to find a blank background that suits it, right? Is it white? Is it gray? Or do you want to make, because we're just going to submit it as a JPEG, so do you want to make a gradation, right? So I can do a gradient. And let's try just a subtle uh, cool to warm gradient. And so then I can fade that out, right, with opacity. Or I can use a layer style over the top of it and layer that gradient with another gradient. Like so. And cut that opacity a little bit. Then I can put on top of all of that, maybe a light blue. And then just take that opacity down a little bit. And then maybe I want to vignette it. I can do that in effects as well. I can do what's called an inner shadow. Multiply it, spread it out, really spread it out. You know, there's lots of little things you can play with that can make it a little noisy. Then more subtle. It's starting to look pretty good. Just so it doesn't look so flat at the corners. So this is all just f kind of framing up your digital painting. But I don't like how hard edge that is, so I'm going to turn that off, the inner shadow, and instead just rely on good old-fashioned burning your vignette. So all these techniques. I have my big customized brush. Make it even bigger. But I'm going to make the exposure pretty high now. And just burn behind. It's not going to be too effective with all of these on, right? You can see the effect it has. 
and put a shadow underneath. But I might have to then turn down the opacity on my blending options a little bit to see more of it. I don't want that. I actually want a little bit more opacity there. So why don't I just do this? I'll duplicate that and then rasterize all the layer styles together. And then I can simply use a soft edged regular brush to vignette at 0% hardness, right? So just remember all of these skills that aren't really painting skills that we have come across through all the projects. Modifying colors, modifying value. They can be helpful here. I could even do like, like we did for our poster, like a texture overlay or something on it, but I think that's a little much. Instead, I'll just put it on dissolve and let it fade a little with the background. Yeah, so that's that's a good kind of blank background behind my my dog in this composition. Okay, so that's it. I just saved this as a JPEG. I think I like that best. I'll we'll save that as a JPEG. <laughs> There's a lot you can do. It doesn't mean you need to do all of it. It can look a little visually heavy. And that's what you're going to put up to Photo Bucket along with your photo reference. Okay, so now let's get experimental. So if I turn off all the backgrounds, And I go, I know you can't see it very well. I don't need the navigator anymore. So, so if I go up to all the paint layers, right, that make it up, then I can start to, to play with them. The first thing I can do clearly is select all the paint layers and then just hit Command J to make duplicates of all of them and then merge those. Use Command E or go to Layers once they're all selected and merge. Merge layers. So now they're in one layer all together. And of course, I can play with the color here. I can say something like Image Adjustment Hue Saturation. And I can just really saturate. Because even though this dog was painted in grays, because I sourced it from a photograph and then added a little bit of color in, those grays have color to them that if I play with the saturation, I can really bring out. Making it more expressionist instead of so representational. Doesn't mean I'll like the colors, but I can bring them out and find like the right hue. And it's also a good way to test if it still comes across in grayscale, which you want it to. This painting, especially to, to model three-dimensional form, is all about the, um, the lights and darks more than the color. So there, when we have those kind of colors augmented, it makes, makes the painting without the colors look pretty, pretty dull indeed. So it's fun to play with it that way, before and after. And I kind of like those colors. Now what if I take it even further, and I turn off all the backgrounds. I have time for this. And we do what we did for our posters. Right? And I just take this layer 
and then I run an action on it. It's my only Photoshop one open. I, I'm not going to flatten it. I shouldn't have to. And I go to my actions, and I go to uh, Carl's color separations, and I'm going to do a CMYK full run on it. And it's going to ask me to merge the layers for each new step, you know, for the cyan, for the yellow, for the magenta. And if I had flattened it ahead of time, I wouldn't have to do that. But it's just that one extra step where I just hit return. Uh -huh. And then that gives me this lovely free-floating half-tone screened portrait of my dog, right? Which then I can put all in a folder. And this is just fun within Photoshop. None of this is required. Close these others. But I like to play with abstracting the digital painting too. So you don't think digital painting is only for representational art. And I can take that whole group, put it on top here, grow it a little bit, because it was at 300 instead of 350. Layer it on top. And then as a group, I can play with the different opacities of it and everything. But I can also play with maybe overlay. That makes it a lot more dramatic, right? So it's getting almost pop art-like now. It's kind of fun. And then I want to play down the magenta. So let's just take that opacity down because that's changing the colors in ways that don't seem true of my dog. I don't have a pink dog. Let's play down the yellow a little bit, but not that much. And maybe tone down the black just a little bit more. Yeah, that's fun and nice. I like that. It's a cute little portrait. And so you're just kind of playing with it in different ways, seeing what you like. And hopefully improving it with each step. And now this grainy background kind of makes more sense. The dissolve. Yeah, I think I like that. As a digital painting, I still have a very strong um, blade of grass, you know, I still have little ones in there for sure. Or maybe I just want a purist background. And that's kind of nice. So file save as. The color version, JPEG, because I already caricatured her body and made her head way bigger. So why not <laughs> with the color a little bit more? All right. So we're going to put those up to Photo Bucket. And when we're all finished, let's see. Yeah, I guess I will. I guess I did it for the cloud. I can move um, the reference photo and save it into the image. That can be fun. Just to show kind of what digital painting can do. And then there's nothing saying you need to keep that original formatting, right? We try to do it at large enough resolution. So maybe I tighten it up a little bit in its composition.